welcome to module four of our breast MRI course. This course outlines the scheduling and other requirements of a breast MRI appointment. It also aims to help the MRI technologist to follow appropriate steps for patient preparation and positioning. It will explain the importance of the high field strength in MR and the dedicated breast coil used for breast MRI. It will outline guidelines for the use of contrast agents and automatic injection in breast MRI. To carry out a breast MRI procedure, we first need to understand appointment timing and other requirements. What is the best time for a breast MRI appointment for a female patient? An appointment for a breast MRI for premenopausal patients is best scheduled during the second week of the menstrual cycle, between approximately the seventh and 13th day of the patient's cycle. This is to reduce background perichymal enhancement. Studies differ when it comes to the effect of BPE on screening MRI results. Most international clinical protocols agree that higher BPE is associated with higher abnormal interpretation rates, but it has no impact on sensitivity or specificity. For menopausal patients, and in rare cases male patients, there is no need for a specific time of the month for the appointment. A key requirement of breast MRI procedure is skimming through breast, previous breast imaging. It is important for the patient to bring along previous mammography and ultrasound results, as well as biopsy results if a biopsy has been previously taken, to correlate the result of the MRI with these findings. As discussed before, some lesions need further investigation through MRI, and malignant tumors could require investigation of their extent and invasion of the deep fascia. MRI could also be indicated before the beginning of cancer treatment to follow the patient's treatment response as well as several other indications explained previously in chapter two. The patient is advised to attend their appointment having nothing to eat or drink for several hours beforehand. This reduces peristaltic bowel movement in the image and the risk of nausea caused by the prone position required for the exam. The patient should change into a hospital gown and remove any metallic accessories like hairpins, and earrings or necklaces to avoid image artifacts. The patient must sign a consent form that informs the patient of the contraindications of MRI, such as pacemakers, metallic implants, or abnormal creatinine levels that indicate risk when administering contrast media. The radiologic technologist should help the patient fill out a questionnaire that summarizes their medical history. This helps the technologist understand the purpose of the MRI exam and should include the following. Age, weight, and menstrual cycle status, family history of breast cancer, history of breast surgeries or biopsies, presence of breast lumps or lesions in their location, presence of signs and symptoms of breast cancer, such as change in breast appearance, pain and swelling or nipple discharge. Other important information that could play a role in the diagnostic correlation. An IV should be prepared for the introduction of contrast media later on in the procedure. The procedure should be clearly explained to the patient by the rad tech to enable them to cooperate well throughout the scan. Now let's look how to prepare the MRI room. A high quality breast MRI is best performed using a high field strength scanner like 1.5 Tesla or 3 Tesla. Higher field strength ensures higher temporal and spatial resolution in breast imaging. Higher field strength depicts smaller anatomical structures and pathological abnormalities more accurately than lower field strengths through acquiring a smaller pixel size. The breast coil. Using a dedicated breast coil is mandatory in order to obtain decent diagnostic quality. A breast coil should have at least four channels. Modern designs have 16 channels or more, and some de designs contain dedicated channels for the axillary region. In general, coils with more channels obtain a higher signal to noise ratio. More channels also enable the use of higher parallel imaging factors, which can increase the speed of image acquisition. How to position the patient on the MRI table. The patient lies prone on the MRI table. The breasts are placed in the middle of the designated slots in the breast coil. The radiologic technologist provides the patient with a protective headset or earplugs and a buzzer in case the patient needs to signal for any assistance. The automatic contrast injector should be connected to the patient's IV line for the dynamic scan later. Contrast media is injected automatically through an injector. The contrast media used is a gadolinium based. A creatinine blood test result allows the radiologic technologist to calculate the EGFR clearance value, 
that means use of a contrast agent will be safe for the patient. According to the ACR manual on gadolinium-based contrast agent, intravenous contrast agents are not safe for patients with chronic kidney failure of kidney injury because of the risk of developing nephrogenic systematic fibrosis. The EGFR value should be higher than 30 milliliters per minute for safe IV administration of gadolinium contrast agent. An automatic injector ensures the accuracy of the dynamic scan through a selected rate of one to two milliliter flow of contrast per second. This depends on the dynamic scan time used in the imaging protocol of the facility. The amount of contrast mean used use is 0.1 millimeters per kilogram and 20 mLs of normal saline flush. Finally, the breast MRI can now be started.